Hi, I'm Chris Strom with Hydroflex. Today we're going to discuss installation tips and some of the new features with the integrated VFD Grunfoss pumping system. Initial startup of your new Grunfoss pump is very simple and easy. After all electrical and water connections have been made and three-phase power has been turned on, you will notice the display screen automatically illuminates and will show you the output pressure set point. You will see that the pump is pre-configured in the constant pressure control mode. You will see that the pump is currently in the stop mode when idle. This will switch to run after a signal is received for the pump to start. To the right of that shows the current pressure reading from the pressure transducer. This is indicating the head or inlet pressure to the pump. Once the pump starts, you should see this number climb to 200 PSI and remain steady there while in operation. In this section, we will take a quick look at the technical specifications for the 40 GPM pump. Full load amps for the motor at 208, 230 volt is 20 amps. And at 460, 480 volt, it is 9.1 amps. The pump utilizes a totally enclosed fan-cooled 7.5 horsepower motor. The gross weight of the pump and drive assembly is a meager 269 pounds. We recommend using the provided 2-inch inlet hose. This prevents pump cavitation and starving for water. The 40 GPM is designed to be mounted to the floor and has a flange at the bottom of the pump with mounting holes. The Grunfoss pumps have been designed to accept up to 180 degree inlet water. It is important to note that this pump will auto-correct rotation and does not need to be checked or changed. Now I'll take you through the locations of the main components of the 40 GPM Grunfoss pump. The water inlet is located at the bottom of the pump and the outlet is located on the opposite side of the pump. Above the inlet and about halfway up the pump is the pressure transducer. And then on the opposite side is the bleeder screw. Next, I will show you the steps taken to prime the pump and remove any trapped air in the pump assembly. This must be done on first startup and subsequently any time the system is opened and air is introduced into the pump. For example, when cleaning the Y strainer or performing a repair. With the water supply turned on to the pump, open the bleeder screw as shown. Do not worry if water does not come out right away. This means that the air is purging out of the pump stack. After a steady stream of water is coming out of the bleeder screw, it is now time to start the pump. But before starting the pump, make sure that all of the outlet hose ball valves are closed. We want to deadhead the pump for this procedure. After closing all the valves, go over to the tunnel controls and manually override or force on one of the outputs to activate the pump. This will force any remaining air out of the bleeder screw. Allow the pump to run for two minutes with the bleeder screw open. After two minutes, close the bleeder screw and then return the tunnel output control to auto or off. The pump may continue to run for 20 seconds after the run command has stopped. Please note, failure to follow these procedures and purge all of the air out of the pump will cause damage to the upper shaft seal. Now we will take a quick look at the technical specifications for the 20 GPM pump. Full load amps for the motor at 208, 230 volt is 13.2 amps, and at 460, 480 volt it is 6.2 amps. This pump utilizes a totally enclosed fan cooled 5 horsepower motor, and the gross weight of the pump and drive assembly is 102 pounds. We recommend using the provided 1 inch inlet hose. This will prevent pump cavitation and starving for water. The 20 GPM pump is designed to be mounted to the wall and a mounting bracket is provided with the pump. Grunfoss has designed this pump to accept up to 180 degree inlet water without causing any damage to the pump components. It is important to note that this pump will auto-correct rotation and does not need to be checked or changed. This is the same as the 40 GPM pump. Looking at the front of the 20 GPM pump, the inlet filter is located here. And it is important to note that the inlet is at the bottom of the pump. The outlet manifold is located midway up the pump as shown by the arrow. The pressure transducer is mounted into the outlet manifold and is pre-wired and installed from the factory. The VFD and display screen is just above the transducer. 
Bleeding is not required on the 20 GPM pump. It is self-priming. This is because the inlet is at the bottom of the pump and it will purge the air out through the outlet manifold naturally. The following procedure should be followed to clean the Y strainer on the 40 and 20 GPM pumps. They are both identical in design, but different in size. For the purposes of the video, we will demonstrate on the 40 GPM pump version. Step one, close the inlet water ball valve to the pump. Step two, using a strap wrench or channel lock pliers, loosen and remove the upper housing from the strainer assembly. Step three, remove the strainer assembly and inspect for debris. If the strainer is clean, it can be reinstalled and the pump will need to be primed if it's a 40 GPM pump. This particular strainer has water deposits and sludge built up on the screen and needs to be cleaned. Step four, take the strainer over to a sink and use a plastic brush and warm water to clean off the strainer and remove debris and water deposits. Step five, install the strainer back into the housing as shown. Tighten the upper housing by hand and then an additional quarter turn with a wrench. Note, there is an inspection cap on the upper housing for a quick check of the strainer prior to removal. I'd like to show you a closer look at the new inlet strainer assembly and how it assembles. This channel here in the lower housing is where the strainer sits in. The strainer must be aligned in this channel or the strainer can become damaged. Once the strainer is seated in the channel, the upper housing can now be tightened to the lower housing. The final step after installing the strainer back into the housing is to turn the water inlet valve back on and then bleed the pump if it's a 40 GPM pump. 